Hi, this is Igor from HDHead.com. The combination of Fusion and Resolve 15 allows us to create more complex and more advanced masks in Fusion and then use those in Resolve's color page. To start, I will go to the Effects Library, click on the magnifying glass, search for Solid, as in Solid Color, but they will be in the generators. Solid Color. Drag this on the timeline, open the inspector, and uh, change the color to something we can actually see, like this yellow. I will make it into a compound clip so we can take it into Fusion. And in Fusion, I will select our media in one, which represents the clip that we sent to Fusion. Right click, go to Insert Tool, Paint, Paint. Alternately, I could have just clicked on this brush icon. With the Paint Tool selected, I'll press 2 on the keyboard to send it to the viewer. And I will select the circle. Draw a circle and press A on the keyboard to see our alpha. Our alpha channel is all white, which is coming from the clip on the edit page timeline. But if I press A again or press C for color, which is same as picking one of these settings from here, I can select the circle and change the alpha to black to zero. Now if I press A, we're cutting a hole back to the timeline. So you see, the circle that we drew in the Paint Tool of Fusion is now cutting a hole right here on our timeline. But it gets a little better than that. Let's select these two clips, hit Delete, scrap that. I will close the Effects Library, go to the Media Pool, and let's get this shot of a dog, drop it on the timeline. I will delete the audio. Let's take this clip to Fusion. So I will do something similar. Uh, but first, let's expand this viewer so it spans across the whole screen. Let's do this. We have a little bit more room to work with. With media in one selected, I'll click on the paint tool. The paint is selected. I'll press 2 on the keyboard, or I can actually drag and drop here. The little dot here in the middle indicates that we're seeing the output of the paint tool in our viewer, number 2, because the first one that we turned off, this is number 1, number 2. From the paint tool palette, I will select the polyline stroke and start drawing a stroke something like that uh, the good thing about fusions paint is that it's vector based so everything that we do can be edited I will change the size of the brush make it softer if you max out the parameter slider you can actually type a larger value so 0.1 was the largest value allowed by sliding, but if I go uh, 0.25, let's try maybe a little smaller, um, 0.2 perhaps. By typing in the value explicitly, we allowed the slider to extend its maximum value. Okay, so let's reshape this a little bit, just so it's less angular. Okay, something like this. So, let's press A to look at our alpha channel. Like last time, it's fully white. And that is because our alpha is at 1.0. So let's drag it down to zero. So now we're cutting that hole. Now that I see it black or white, I'm going to reshape it even more. Let's see our RGB color. I actually don't need to paint white on the visible portion of the picture, so I can turn off the red, green, and blue channels. What's going on now is we're only painting in the alpha channel the reason why we see this checkerboard here is to let us know that there's alpha channel there, but uh, if you go to Options, Checker, Underlay, you can turn it off. So now you see the alpha, or you see the full RGB of the channel. Good, so now we'll turn on the alpha again, and let's go to Stroke Controls. Here we have an interesting write-on capability. I will keyframe the end and the start position so the stroke is invisible at the first frame. Then I will go to the last frame. Make the stroke play out. But what is going on now is you see the start and the end are kind of canceling out each other so we're not, we don't see anything on the screen. So somewhere about in the middle of the animation, I'm going to create another keyframe where I extend the tail of the stroke like this. So the effect of that will be that uh, this thing paints on, it extends, and it kind of collapses again. 
but I want this black portion to be white and everything that's white I want it to be black because I want this to become the cutout and one of the ways to do that is to add math control with paint selected I will press control space type in math control click on OK math control allows me to invert if I press 2 that will send the math to the viewer so we have the same thing just inverted and remember we're still looking at the alpha channel of the image if I press C on the keyboard or select color from this drop down menu there's absolutely no change in the picture the only thing that's changing is the alpha which will cut out this picture so let's take this out go back to the edit page there it is I will move this clip to video track 2 and put the same dog underneath it but now I realize we have this pre-multiplication issue where Resolve is expecting to see pre-multiplied image but we can fix that easily by going back to Fusion maybe the quickest way right now would be just to apply post multiply image in the math control so we pre-multiply the image with alpha go back to the edit page but now you don't see anything even though we are comping that cutout over this image if I select the bottom layer go to inspector cut down the opacity you can see it now let's take that to the color page so our cutout is still there but we're not seeing the background if I unmix we'll see both in place so now I can either color correct the background or I can color correct the foreground and I can also apply any of these uh, resolve effects let's try to apply glow and see what that gives us I'll drag the glow and drop it onto the node whatever m intricate masking we come up in fusion we can use that mask in resolve to isolate parts of the image one important thing to remember when applying these filters is that they will not spill outside the confines of the alpha channel perhaps the easiest way to see that is of if I uh, apply rays let's type in rays no matter how much length I give to the rays they're staying inside of that bean shaped thing which is a little limiting but uh, that's just the way it is hey I hope you enjoy this short tutorial on masking using fusion of course you can mask using the secondaries in the color page but if you build masks in Fusion, you can get a lot more detail, a lot more precision, and you can also get these sort of freehand paint effects that would be very difficult or probably impossible to do in Resolve Color Page. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.